The following is rated S for spoilers. Look, all I'm saying, bro, if, if Apollo Creed could take a chance on some underdog, why can't you? Hello and welcome to the Popcorn Hangover. My name is Alex. My name is Graham. And today we are discussing Creed 3 and his directorial debut. We have Michael B. Jordan at the helm, uh, written by Keenan Kugler and Zach Balin, uh, with some story help by Keenan's brother Ryan Kugler, uh, starring Michael B. Jordan, Tessa Thompson, and Jonathan Majors, releasing March 3rd, 2023. An estimated budget of $75 million. So far, it's in its opening weekend worldwide, it's made 100.5 and 58.6 that came domestically. Nice. So it's not doing too bad for itself. No, not at all. I thought I saw a headline like actually like yesterday or the other day where they're like that Thursday night, that night before release, made like the most that any of the like movies in the trilogy like so far have made. Interesting. So I was like, that's really I mean, cool. I, I believe it. Yeah. Uh, Graham, how are you doing this week? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing yeah. good. I really liked this one. I'm you, excited to talk about you this. You walked in and you just went, that movie was incredible and you haven't stop talking about how yeah. incredible it is <laughs> i was really like blown away like i just like i just got out of seeing it so uh-huh. like it is it's still fresh fresh mind. it was dope uh-huh. dude yeah i really liked it all okay. right yeah so i mean let's just jump into it what are your what are your thoughts yeah. i mean um, oh, i mean you liked it obviously but a right. little, little more in depth a little what more in depth thoughts? it was i for one so like i have never been like a boxing guy i do not care i've heard of creed and all the rockies like i've actually seen like the rockies growing up i watched those Uh um i never watched the first or second creed Uh i just went into three for this episode Mm -hmm. um and man do i wish i had watched the others before because this Mm -hmm. was insane uh the pacing of the movie i thought was great the fight scenes were so intense Uh and even just the characters like dude it was like i i was like speechless at some points i was Uh on the edge of my seat the almost the whole movie like it got like kind of like intense and like dark in some areas like i dude this movie was like i literally just feel like i have no other words besides it was so like sick like it was just really uh-huh. really it was a lot of fun but uh-huh. it was very intense no yeah for sure you definitely got like the full boxing movie effect oh yeah um i mean that's that's just how this form it's so formulaic and yeah. they use it over and over and over again but it like I've, it still I've works seen, like like mcgregor fights and like pay-per-view fights like with friends i've mm-hmm. gone to houses i've gone to parties and i have never had any interest in those fights or how they end or the way it's scored with points and stuff I just do not care, but dude, watching- oh, they are they are so boring because yeah. like I I work with sports and so we have TVs on all the time and so Absolutely. like I'll watch like boxing and MMA every once in a while when it's on ESPN and yeah. like I I'm like I don't know this is so stupid how do like wh- how are points working um, and I saw a review on Letterboxd I think for the first one where they were mm-hmm. like why can't every pay per view fight be like this because dude, it's right? just <laughs> it's so incredible and it's, it was it seems so, so well amazing done. yeah this was like insane mm-hmm. yeah I. I did have your reaction okay. when I watched the first one a few days ago. Okay. Um, because like you, I had never seen any of the Creed movies. Right. Um, I'd seen Rocky. Uh, and Creed has always been on, like, on my list of must-watch movies because I've heard it's really good. Mm-hmm. But I've seen Rocky. I've seen uh, Million Dollar Baby and all these other boxing movies. And so mm-hmm. I've pretty much already seen all the Creed movies. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I watched the first one and I was so mad at myself for never seeing it because that is a near perfect movie. Holy crap. That movie was so fantastic. And then the next night I watched Creed two and it was fine. It was, it was another boxing movie. Yeah. And then I watched Creed three and about halfway through I was sitting there like, man, I'm really burnt out on this because it's just, it's the, it's the same thing just three yeah. days in a row. And so it was really good. Okay. I did really enjoy my time. Like it, yeah. I, it was a really fantastic movie. Yeah. But also, I made the mistake of watching all three in a row, and that <laughs> you went from zero to hundred. Dude, that nothing. was that was too much. You can only be yeah. so motivated by an epic final training montage. Like yeah. that's. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I did really enjoy the movie. Uh, this is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. He knocked it out of the park. I can't say anything. He, he, he knocked it. He, he knocked, knocked it, out. it out. Yeah. KO. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> Got him. No, but absolutely. He killed this movie. It was, I forgot. Like, I know I heard about that, that this was mm-hmm. his first, um, his yeah debut in that. And like, I, yeah, I don't think there's much to say against it. Again, I don't know how the others were, how this falls in mm-hmm. line with them. If it had a similar flow, had a similar 
Yeah, I mean, like know, I said, they're, style. they're all they're all the same. I said there's not um, much else you can do differently, so I figured. No, but um, yeah, they're all the exact same movie, mm-hmm. um, just with a different oppo- opponent, really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he did fantastic. I mean, I mean, a lot of people have said things like, "Wow, this is really weird." like introduction to directing because this is like the third movie in this really big trilogy and there's a lot of hype and expectation towards it. But honestly, I think that this was a really good decision for Mm -hmm. him. A, cause he already, he is Apollo Creed. He's He's been doing it it. for, cause first one came out in 2015. So Mm -hmm. that's eight years now that he's been playing this character and he, so he knows the acting side of it. He's got that part down. And then also like, it is very formulaic. It works, right? Yeah, it is very formulaic, and so like he doesn't have to try that hard on that end. Um, he has Ryan Coogler in his corner producing uh, along with him. Uh, Michael Jordan also mm-hmm. produced it with Ryan Coogler. So like, and they've worked in the past, obviously with Black Panther. Yes, I mean, I mean it's Black Panther, Fruitvale Station. Like, yeah, that, that's a really big pairing. Um, yeah, I heard her. Like, I, I've watched quite a few interviews with him, and he was talking about you know like talking to Ryan Coogler about how to do things. And then also talking to other actor directors like Denzel Washington, he just hit up because, you know, because you can Michael just B. Jordan, you can Denzel just text Washington. text Denzel Washington and be like, Hey, I'm directing a movie. And any Den- pointers? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Like Denzel immediately said, I just called my storyboard guy. He's he, like, he's going to hook you up, like storyboard everything. And like, that was bro. So, I mean, yeah, I was like, man, that's so cool. Like, I remember I saw one interview, uh, someone asked him and he, he noted on, uh, that there's for the fight scenes for like the choreography and stuff, the way it's shot that they pulled a lot of inspiration from like anime fights mm-hmm. and like, dude, you, you can, can tell you can, you can, s- you can see it. It was so in that last fight when he's just jab after jab, after jab the arms open up. And I was like, dude, that looked straight out of like, yeah, mm-hmm. that was just, let's talk about that last fight really quick. Yeah. Cause I think that might be, I don't want to say one of the best fight sequences, like as a generality, mm-hmm. but one of the best boxing sequences I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Definitely got to be the best I've ever seen. I haven't seen many, so I was going to say. I haven't. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but for them, like when it went, so yeah, talking about that last scene, when they were, you know, in the first couple rounds, it was rough. They were really just going at each mm-hmm. other. And then when it started, when he was like, he's like, stop boxing, like start fighting. And like the background goes all dark and it's just the two of them, like really in the ring. I stopped breathing. I was so, it, that was so I, intense. It was so like deep on so many levels mm-hmm. dude my watch told me like four times my heart rate got up to 140 i don't know what that means i don't know if that's like crazy or not <laughs> I, I know my watch never tells me the only ever time it's over it told me was during maverick and the batman which i don't mm-hmm. understand the batman but like this was i was like mm-hmm. i was in that last fight like that was insane yeah that, that i almost like teared up just because like because both of us i think we kind of got like our real introduction into like the making of films and everything through Ismahawk. Oh, absolutely. and like one of the things they always said, they always like talked about was storytelling through action. Oh yeah. And that can be really difficult to do. Cause a lot of times it's just, all right, we're going to do a really cool trick here and then you're going to do this cool move and it's going to look really cool. And there's no actual sustenance to it. Right. And that right there was such a cool way to just have so much storytelling within a fight and all of yeah. the frustration and anger that, both of these characters have mm-hmm. at each other and at themselves. And it was just like all of these things were bo- like just building up and building up. And yeah. it was such a great. It just stacked so well. Nothing felt yeah. out of place. It was so like fluid from like when they would do close, like when they're in their corners, like after a round and they would just like close up on their eyes and you could tell like, like uh, Dame was just like, like zoned in. He did not care about anything else to rely. Like he was dead set on, mm-hmm. um, on Creed. And then like Creed, like you just focus in, like you could just see the two of them. And then would a flashback to like them seeing their younger selves, like who they're actually like fighting, like what they're fighting over. And I was like, dude, mm-hmm. that was, again, it was insane. It was really insane. Everything, but I can't help, but just think that there would be no movie. If these two grown ass men just sat down and talked about, just, just talked it out for like five minutes. <laughs> Well, I know, because, like, I mean, it, honestly, it could have been as, like, he was like, oh, like, I wrote, uh, like, I wrote to you. And he's like, oh, you did? He's like, that's crazy. I never got him. Like, did he think he was lying? Or could he have been like, what do you mean? That's like, he's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, well, your mom still live there? And he's yeah. like, yeah. He's like, I sent the letters there. And he's like, cool. And, like, why did Creed never be like, huh, I wonder why my mom, like, never gave me those letters? Like, is he lying about that? Am I lying about that? Like, it could have been sorted right there at breakfast, like, when uh-huh. they got food or lunch or whatever. But, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, if you look, put some like real world logic into it, obviously it kind of mm-hmm. just tears the whole thing apart. But still, it was an epic fight scene. Yeah, so many cool things going on. I also think that was cool. Like one of the things Michael B. Jordan did, 
um, because he is an actor first, mm-hmm. um, and he's done these movies before. Uh, one of the things he said was during when they were filming the fight sequences, like as an actor, you kind of get into the flow of the fight. And so sometimes the director will say, okay, cut. You didn't do that one right. move correctly. But Michael B. Jordan, knowing what it's like to be in the flow of things, would just let, could let the take go. And then that way, if they, that, the future parts of the fight mm-hmm. would be so much better because they were right. just, they were really in it. And I felt like I could really feel that as well compared to the other two. Like it never, I don't know, just, something maybe it's because i knew that going in but mm-hmm. like there's just something felt like really fluid through oh, all yeah. of these crazy fast cuts and different angles and things just throughout all of it it just it felt fluid and really intense yeah between majors and jordan which which was again i got fantastic move i gotta say jonathan majors he is killing it mm-hmm. i'm sorry honestly and one thing like this is gonna tie a little because we talked about ant-man mm-hmm. right and this is kind of like aside from the movie, but the character that he played, mm-hmm. his like demeanor and how intense he was and like his, like obviously he wouldn't have the same like, he wouldn't be acting on the same like revenge level necessarily or sure. like vengeance. But like, I wanted this, I wanted Dame to be Kang. That's what I wanted Kang I want, to be. I wanted Kang to be more manipulative like Kang yes. was. Yes, where he spun a creed around his finger. He got it where he needed to be. He got his title card. He got his fight at the end. Like he was just ruining things right by left. Like mm-hmm. that's what I wanted for King. So I was just like, Oh, I like, mean, they, and I mean, they were very similar types of characters, a strong, quiet type. And honestly, I'm kind of worried for Jonathan majors just because he's going to get cast type. I think he's going to get typecast. Cause typecast. Yeah. Yeah. This is two out of the three episodes we've done this year. Um, have been starring Jonathan majors as the same character. And then earlier yeah. in January, he did another movie called magazine dream where he also plays Very the exact same character. character. Tough. Um, so like that's three movies in three he months. Be careful. Yeah. yeah. Where he's been kind of the same person. So that could get scary for him. But also I was talking with someone today. Yeah. It's kind of genius because for any of those three movies, maybe not so much quantum mania. Quantum mania mm-hmm. is kind of a perk, but like, you got to be ripped for, for Creed and Golly. magazine dream. Yeah. Um, and if I had to guess all three of those movies and all those productions were giving him some sort of stipend or compensation mm-hmm. for maintaining his physique, but he had yeah. to do it for all the other movies. So I really want to know, like, did, did he just make a boatload of money just from being ripped and then doing three movies where he had to have that requirement. And they just said, all right, we need you to get in shape. So like we'll pay for your workouts and all this stuff. And they're like, we'll give you some money for maintaining your body. And he if just, he did, that's genius. I that's mean, like a whole nother level of like getting around things. Cause that's insane. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to think, I mean, yeah, like I feel like you got, you can be in similar head spaces mm-hmm. for all of it. I don't know. Just an interesting yeah. interesting thought. While we're, I mean, while we're on the topic of, of acting, mm-hmm. um, Michael B. Jordan did fantastic Insane. here. Yeah. Once again, uh, he, even as like the businessman, like family, I don't know how much his like family or like mm-hmm. the gym necessarily are in the other two. I feel like it's still a big part of it. Cause you yeah, yeah, they're definitely very big similar. Okay. But dude, he killed it. Mm-hmm. The signing with the daughter, like that was the cutest thing ever. His daughter was adorable. Like mm-hmm. Tessa Thompson crushed it. I'm sorry. I personally just never liked her as Valkyrie. I never had, I didn't like, I know I just never, okay. I don't know. Just didn't like care for her. Dude, she killed it. Like yeah, she Tessa was Thompson's amazing fantastic. in this. Yeah, like, um, absolutely. I'm, I'm just gonna keep saying you just need to go, go, go watch the other two now. I'm probably gonna. I'm gonna. You I'm think, gonna you think to. it's amazing now? Yeah. Go watch the. F- you can skip the second one. The second yeah. one's good, but the first one is just. <laughs> Dude, this is this is similar. This is what I do with like Cobra Kai. Uh-huh. I just watched that last like the newest season or whatever four or five whatever we watched uh-huh. and talked about. And then like we went back and we watched all of them because mm-hmm. it would. Dude, it was so much fun. It was so good. That's what I'm excited for for these. Like. Like I said, if I yeah, if I really enjoyed the third one like I did, I'm mm-hmm. I'm excited for the first and second one too. Yeah, acting across the board was absolutely fantastic. I know we're gonna go back a little bit, but mm-hmm. I did want to talk about one thing with Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like a lot of times when these like new, especially actor directors who are very familiar with the process, I feel like a lot of times there's a few like little things you can tell yeah. that they do that they're still kind of learning, and in this movie. It bothered me so much that every five minutes there was a shot pointed at a mirror where it was like an over the shoulder and you're looking at their face like through mm-hmm. the mirror. Every five minutes there was another mirror shot. That like that bathroom scene specifically in the morning <laughs> no. when they wake and he's like they're talking to each other. I was like, did 
That I was, was like, so, yeah. I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong. It's cool once or twice mm -hmm. when it makes sense. It's like a bathroom scene. Like you, you're filming in a tight space. Okay, that's a cool like, like use yeah. of the space and everything. Made it work, exactly. To make the shot more interesting because it's a bathroom. But every five minutes, Michael B. Jordan, let's, let's when calm he it down. Was in his like montage, when he was just standing in the middle of a runway in front of this like 15 by like 25 foot mirror, just mm -hmm. shadow boxing. I, I, I don't, maybe that's the thing they do. I don't know. I was like, you could. I watch don't. The first one. <laughs> okay, I need to watch. I probably do. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I forgot. I keep forgetting. Uh -huh. This is number three, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. I came in right at the end of it. Is this is this the final in the series? Uh, you know what? That is. I was a curious fantastic about that. question. We'll get to it in a second. First, okay. I want to I want to say one one thing. Okay. Um, and you're not gonna have much input on this because you didn't watch the other two. Uh, but <laughs> another thing that bothered me about this movie, at first, mm -hmm. while I was watching it, was the music, because Creed has a really cool motif throughout the first two films, like over and over and over again. We have, uh, okay. we have Ludwig Gordonson composing. So obviously it's given him, it's, it's yeah. amazing score. Um, and he has this really cool motif that works great as a Creed theme mm -hmm. and it's over and over and over. And for this movie, I forget his name, but they hired someone from Ludwig's team. So like he worked on the other two, but now he's the actual composer. Yeah. Um, and I didn't hear the theme. I heard it like once at the beginning and then never again until he like got back into training the at the fight. end of the end of the training montage. Okay. And then we got like a little, and then we got it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's so brilliant because the Creed theme is about him boxing and like told me he Creed. isn't, he isn't fighting. He's a right. different Creed. And so it would make sense to have a different theme. Mm -hmm. So it really bothered me at first, but at the end I was kind of like, okay, I see, I see mm -hmm. what you did there. That was really clever. Um, that is smart. Yeah, but then yeah. they played the freaking Rocky theme at the end. And we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk about that here yeah. next segment, um, especially because there was no Rocky, which we'll also <laughs> talk about next segment. Who next segment? Just fair it's warning. It's going to get real yeah. heated in about five or ten minutes. Um, but yeah, I do have to put one warning with this movie. Yeah, um, you know, I'm always looking out for the little things, kind of giving my like more family based review. Uh -huh. um, in this case, it's not necessarily that. I'm going to give a, a warning to every guy that might possibly take their girlfriend, fiance, wife, any spouse. Oh, uh, don't! I'm my, sorry. I went with my wife. <laughs> that was the worst decision I ever made, man. You're getting Michael B. Jordan and. Uh, Jonathan Major is just like shirtless the entire thing. Absolutely ripped. I made a mistake. I'm when, sorry. When like, my girlfriend and I went and saw Quantum Mania. She was like, dang. She's like, Jonathan Majors is ripped. Like, he looks nice. And I was like, all right, you're not seeing Creed with me because yeah. that's how you reacted to, <laughs> that's how you reacted to Kang like with one sleeve off. So I'm well, gonna I, go, I, I, I gave the invitation. I was myself. like, I'm going to go see this this afternoon. Uh -huh. Would you like to come with me? And she's like, I literally, why would I care to go see Creed? Like, I don't know about it. Don't care about it. Googles it. And she's like, <laughs> Where, when are we going? I was like, dude, dude. I was like, okay. So no, I mean, two hard defense too. Again, same, same similarities where like, we've never seen any like main related movie. She had never even seen Rocky or any of that. Mm -hmm. She loved it, but probably for different reasons I did. So it was I mean, a little tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You tough. can't compete with them though. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. Uh, yeah. I saw, I saw, I, I saw my, again, my, my friend, he's like, he is a personal trainer and he was saying that Jonathan majors has 5% body fat, which Gosh. is like, just doesn't compute how that's even possible. Like that's just, I mean, dude, sometimes you'd see him flex and I was like, his skin is just going to tear. Like, <laughs> is that, can that be contained? Like that's insane. Uh huh. Yeah. Which also I had one thing too. Like, again, I don't know anything about boxing. Mm -hmm. I know like in the movie, they're actually like when those like, um, like the sportscasters are like going through yeah. and they're like, I don't know. He's had all these concussions and all these tears and all these problems. And mm -hmm. like, is he even going to make weight? And like, there's no way that they are in the same weight class. I'm sorry. Jonathan majors is huge. That's true. When they were in that final ring, I'm sorry, side by side. I, like, well, I think that is, I don't think that's a requirement. I think it's more of a, like you would determine that beforehand. Well, normally I say normally that's how they get paired up is depending on like heavyweight. Yeah. Class or like lightweight I think class. that's how but they normally get paired up, but I wonder if it's just, since it's a challenge of the two of them, since they're, they're challenging, it's like, we, I don't care much. You yeah. We're just going to, I mean, he forward. probably had to make like some weight, I guess for regulations for the heavyweight title to like reclaim that is sure, the only thing sure. I could think of, but to actually fight the two together, I was like, dude, he is holding so much more compared to Michael B. Jordan. I didn't really think about that, but yeah, that's good. He's just, a no, yeah, no, it's definitely not because in the second one, that was like a big thing was you have Ivan Drago, who's this, who's massive guy yeah, who is the guy who was training with yeah, in yeah. Mexico or wherever that ended up being. Um, yeah. it was Mexico in the second one, but like, yeah, he fought Ivan Drago. Like that's, 
that's an even bigger unfair matchup. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. I don't know how the weight thing. That's a good point. Okay. I didn't really notice that. But I also didn't pick up. Yeah, if it was like a challenge directly, then I'm assuming that's probably how that skipped works. over. I don't. I mean, look at me. I don't box. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you asked about Creed Four. Uh, yeah. What do, do you do? You think they're? I mean, what do you think? I. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know. From what I'm hearing, mm-hmm. if one, two, and three are the same, mm-hmm. basically, I mean, you're gonna have some movies like. The Fast and Furious, who have done the same thing ten times over now. Well, well, here's the. It's maybe not just, they can keep going. It's not just the Creed movies that are the same. It's just the genre that's the same. Rocky one through five, Rocky one through Creed three True. are all the same movie. True. Any boxing movie you watch is Real Steel is the same movie as this, and that's <laughs> Dude, about robots for, boxing. I forgot about that movie. <laughs> I always, that was a throwback. I always oh. forget about Real Steel until I remember it, and then it's just straight nostalgia. Like, oh my gosh, what it was a, a good movie. What a Hugh great Jackman movie. Was that, right? yeah, that yeah. was Hugh Jackman. Dang. But I mean, yeah. any box movie is yeah. going to be the the exact same, and so and that's just the genre. Mm-hmm. Um, See, at the end, like, my wife, when I, we were watching, she was saying, like, when he was, like, in the ring, like, boxing with his daughter or whatever, and she was like, I'm the champion, like, whatever. She was, like, mm-hmm. playing at the end. Like, that was so cute. But she was like, dude, if they make more, like, she's it's going to be her in the future. She's definitely going to the, the next. name. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, sure. And so, like, I could see them doing that, but I didn't, like, I didn't know, like, is this a... Uh, for Adonis Creed, like, is this Creed three and done, or is there going to be... I I would be down for a Creed four. Mm-hmm. My... Especially if it's like this, like, mm-hmm. give him give him the director spot again. Like, let's see it. My only concern with Creed four is what do they do with the character? Um, cause even after Creed two, like I was kind of like, how do you, how do you mm-hmm. carry this on further? Especially because they're making these every four years. Right. Michael B. Jordan can't keep it up forever. Um, right. I mean, he, I, he's a beast, so I'm sure he can do it for a little bit longer, right. but like he can't do it forever. And so I'm mean, still on, still going hard though. Uh, not in this one though. Well, not out for this one. Not in this one. Who? Yeah. Hold it back. Hold, hold it back. Seg- hold it together. Segment two. Second. <laughs> segment two. <laughs> segment two. Um. Yeah. It, I just don't know where they would go with it. Um, yeah. I mean, seeing them go from two to three and like, okay, this was really interesting how they mm-hmm. took him out of the boxing scene. Now he's more of a promoter. See, that, that's what I like. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Like having um, the school, having the gym, like mm-hmm. get the other boxers like promoted and like when he what he, what he did with Felix, like. That was dope. He was right there mm-hmm. in his ring. He basically like got him up to the title card. Like, mm-hmm. that's great. And so like I honestly could see them doing that. I feel like stayed in retirement, but then you're looking at the same thing that they basically just did here. Right. So I don't know. We're we'll we'll see. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to a Creed Four as long as the right story is there. Yeah. And I think that's gonna be hard to find. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially without Sylvester Stallone in a legacy sequel. But also this movie is kind of proving that it can stand on its own. Yeah. If you didn't know this had anything to do with Rocky, if you had never heard of Rocky and you knew that you Rocky no and Apollo Creed fought, you probably wouldn't know what right. was going on. I mean, the one reference to it was more of a cultural reference of yeah. Rocky and Apollo fought and everyone talks about that fight. Like mm-hmm. that could be a real world conversation that you had just as right. a cultural reference. So we're going to yeah. dive deeper into that next segment and talk about how um, Creed three created 2015 is one of the best legacy sequels of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, Yet Creed three is kind of creating a legacy for Creed on his own. Right. Um, And we're going to talk about how, how they did that. Is it a good thing? Is that a bad thing? All the things, all the creeds, all the Rockies. So stay tuned. So we're talking legacy sequels. Yes. Once again, I feel like on this show it is Marvel, maybe Star Wars, and legacy sequels, and those are like our, our three main topics. Our three most discussed topics. It's yeah, it's been in the loop. It's not. I mean, <laughs> it's not entirely our fault. That's just what. Here's the thing. That's what that's people are coming out. out. Exactly. Yeah, that's what people are interested in. So that's what we're interested in at least. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it. Absolutely. I mean, you're listening to this episode, so clearly you have some sort of interest. <laughs> People um, just sign off. They're just <laughs> done. Also, look at the analytics at this timestamp. Everyone just disappears. Dang. Except for me. That's sad. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I have I watched I watched the little Creed trilogy. Yeah. And I noticed an interesting trend across all three movies. Okay. Um. Because I want to talk about like how one of the things the big narratives around this movie is is Sylvester Stallone not being involved 
and there being absolutely no mention of Rocky for some ridiculous reason. Um, and how, but despite that, like they were able to take this and Creed three kind of stands on its own from the rest of the franchise. And really it's kind of outgrown its legacy. There are people who have seen the Creed movies who have never seen the Rockies mm-hmm. because I mean, Rocky came out 50 years, almost 50 right. years ago. So like, dang, like Creed three, and Creed as a trilogy has really developed itself to be able to stand on its own and to create its own legacy and how it is do that. And I don't know. I just want to dive into that and kind of how other legacy sequels can do that. Cause right. we're going to run out of a lot of, I mean, there's only you can't so do many a legacy off of a legacy. Like, off of right. There's only so many legacy. movies that were made in the eighties <laughs> that we can re- come back and, and revamp. Yeah. So People How, need to come up with original ideas, guys. Come on. What's an original idea? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. Um, so anyway, I found I found a, li- a bit of a trend across the three Creed movies. Because okay. uh, each one, I think, represents a different aspect of this topic. Okay. So first Creed, I think, is the perfect legacy sequel. Um, Ryan Coogler did all the things. He wrote, directed, produced. He did everything. And Ryan Coogler is amazing. And he knew what he was doing. And he was very, very careful with every aspect of it. Creed was both, it could stand on its own. If you had never seen Rocky or heard of it, mm-hmm. that's fine. You would have, you would have gone through the movie and it would have been a really cool boxing movie. Right. Um, but it did a really good job at honoring the past and it made, it was continuing Rocky five is almost Rocky six, to be honest, like just with Rocky going and helping Creed and, doing all that stuff. And then there's, I don't want to, I'm trying to not be spoilery for anyone who hasn't seen it. And also for Graham, hasn't seen it. <laughs> um, but you know, rock goes through his own issues and Creed has to help him with that. And so like, there's lots, it, it just, it continues. Okay. It continues what Rocky was doing and all of the greatness of the Rocky films, but it was making it Creed, but while also making it new. So for example, hmm. and this is a, a bit of a, a hot take. I'm not the biggest fan of Rocky. It's a perfectly fine movie. Yeah. But for its for its time, it was great. Right. For now, it's just incredibly slow. Um, it's like a two and a half hour movie, and it could easily be ninety minutes. Like it's just lots of wow. Just it's lots of slice of life stuff, and that was kind of the point because it wasn't supposed to be a big box. I mean, it was a big box movie, but I think the idea that Sylvester Stallone had behind it was this is an every man story. That this there's this guy. He lives a normal life. He likes to box. He gets this crazy opportunity. And he sends it. He doesn't win, but you know, he's able to achieve his own goal. Whatever. Like he doesn't win? No, I'm just kidding. I was (laughs) was like, um (laughs) (laughs) No. Um so like I don't know. So Rocky is supposed to be different, but then like you watch Creed and just it's completely revamped. It's got a very modern take on all the boxing things. The amount of winners. Um there there's one fight. It's two rounds of boxing all in one take. Um, it took them 13 takes to make and like, wow, it was just, it's so incredible. Like watching it, like on the edge of your seat. And this is in the first hour of the movie, maybe like, it's just, oh, wow, it's really great. Like lots of new innovation and thing for the genre and for this franchise all around. It was just, it was a perfect, it was, just, it was a perfect legacy sequel. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that I think is important with this is when you have Rocky, which has such an iconic theme with, with flying high, yeah. um, you got to be really careful with how you use it. And Ludwig Gordonson again, did such a great job at it. Mm-hmm. Um, we get little like light um, orchestral versions of the melody when it's Rocky centered moments, cause it's Rocky's theme. So obviously you right. would play it. Um, and then they get the opening fanfare right before the big fight. And it's like, Oh yeah, this is the Rocky theme. And right before it actually gets to the melody, it cuts off and we get into the fight and you're like, Oh yes, I'm hyped up. I got the nostalgia. Like it was a nice <laughs> little reference. Right. Now we can keep going. And in other words, it's all about Creed's theme musically. And it's all about Creed. And it was great. I loved it. I could watch that movie every day for the rest of my life. And I don't know if I would get <laughs> tired of it. Um, then we get to Creed 2. Now I'll be honest, this is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Because I kind of just want to rant about Creed 2 for a minute. <sighs> Go um, for it. Chains off. Send it. Creed 2 <sighs> is not s- such a great legacy sequel. Okay. Um, as a whole, it's just not a really great sequel, sequel in general. Like, okay. the first one is obviously going to, is better than the second one, like, right. as is per usual. Um, it was just a little on the edge, a little silly. They were trying to make a reference to Rocky four where Apollo Creed dies and Rocky four was made in the cold war era. And the whole like premise of that movie was Rocky going to Russia and 
beating a Russian on his home turf after the Russian murdered like the USA Patriot fighter. So like it was the most USA <laughs> satire <laughs> thing I've not right. satire like USA propaganda yeah ever. So the fact they were trying to like bring I understand why they brought it back because right. obviously it was when Apollo Creed died. But, like, it was just, it was hard to take seriously knowing that, like, this was very much just, like, propaganda at the time. And now you're trying to, like, make it serious and, like, this big moment for yeah. Adonis Creed. Um, so that, and it was, I don't know. It was just. It was rough. For me, it was a little rough. Okay. Um, but a lot of the issues come at the end. The okay. end is, like, that's the part that just make, that gets you hyped up. And, you, you know, that's, right. that's what makes these movies great, these boxing movies great, is the ending. Um. Number one sin of this movie uh, is is the music. So I told, I said like I said last time they did a really great job of like balancing when to use the iconic theme and when not to. Okay. In Creed two, he he knocks down uh, uh, Ivan, and then you get the big fanfare again. You're like, yeah, he won, and then Ivan gets back up. You're like, oh no, he didn't win. That's so crazy. And instead of getting the Creed theme, he knocks him down again. And then you get the full flying high theme and, and full fanfare. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. A theme is supposed to like, a musical theme is supposed to represent the character, which is Rocky. Right. Rocky's on Rocky's on the sideline. He's, he's coaching, sure. But he's not, he didn't do that. He's not the moment. We don't, right. we don't need Rocky's theme right now. I get what you're trying to do. But like, you know, I already got the reference. It right. was cool. I got the nostalgia. I, this is Creed's time. This is Creed's theme. And the whole theme of the movie is about creating your own legacy and growing beyond who you're told you have to be and what you think you have to do because of the legacy that you think you have and okay. creating your own legacy. And so one of the parts of that theme is that at the end, Creed wins, obviously, because it's a boxing movie. And then Creed goes and like, hey, Rocky, come on. And Rocky's like, no, 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 I'm going to stay down here. This is this is your thing. I'm going to stay down here because this isn't my movie. Right. I don't want people you know, bragging <laughs> about me. And then the next, the rest of the movie, it's just a tracking shot of Rocky sitting down and he's looking at the ring with all the people surrounding Creed who you don't even see. So in this moment that is all about Rocky giving the spotlight to Creed, we never see Creed in the spotlight. It is all about the legacy. It is all about Rocky. I'm not, I don't care about Rocky right now. He had five movies for me to yeah. care about him. I'm here for Creed right now. Yeah. But it was... No, it's, it's, this is also a Rocky movie. This is the Rocky franchise, so we got to focus on Rocky. The last shot of the movie is also about Rocky. And I'm like... Okay, now I'm actually like so glad he's not in this movie. Well, here's the thing. Okay. He should have been? He, sh he didn't need to be in the movie. So okay. the reason that he isn't is Sylvester Stallone... Um, kind of screwed up because he, he wrote Rocky and everything like he, I don't right. know if he'd actually been in anything at that point in time. Uh, he wasn't, okay. at, he wasn't Sylvester Stallone. Right. Yet. He wasn't the big name. Um, right. and so when he wrote it, he just wanted to get the movie made. No one knew that this was going to be going on 50 years later. True. And so he made a really bad deal and he doesn't own any rights to anything. Yeah. He's kind of, he, he just, he's in a kind of like a blood feud with MGM over the rights. And another issue is that Sylvester Stallone is. He, the way he likes to create characters and create stories is he thinks that the world is dark enough. We don't need our characters to go to these really, really dark places, which I found interesting when, in, when you were talking about Creed 3, how you said you really liked how right. dark it was. Um, and I think Mugby Jordan, Ryan Coogler knew this, and so they wanted to go in that direction. And I think that's really the only direction they could have taken Creed. Oh, but absolutely. Sylvester Stallone was not going to sign off on that. But really? he doesn't really get a choice because he didn't own any of the rights. <sighs> um, he's not he's not a producer. Like right. Michael B. Jordan owns more rights to the Rocky name than Sylvester Stallone does. And so that is unfortunate. So he yeah he wasn't a part of the movie because he has no control and he he had to leverage some things. He said, "Fine, I won't be in the next movie." But like. So they said, okay, cool. You won't be in the next movie. Don't need you. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it really sucks because the Creed movies are a lot about the relationship between Creed and Rocky. Okay. Um, Creed calls him unk all the time. Cause like that's the, he goes and lives with Rocky and like he always goes and talks to Rocky. And so for me, like one of the other things that took me out of Creed three mm -hmm. to go back to the review, I was holding this for this part. Um, it was constantly me out of it that like they never mentioned Rocky at all once right. i mean they they mentioned him they, they mentioned, mentioned the, the fight, fight right a couple of times and how iconic it is right but they never talked about the relationship that he has with rocky and like yeah it could have been so simple it could have just yeah. been a simple oh you know like when rocky died um because spoilers uh 
Rocky gets cancer in the first one, mm-hmm. and then the second one takes place four years later, but it cancer's never mentioned ever again. So like he gets cancer and he has cancer, and it's never. I mean, I obviously I guess he beat it, but they could have easily fixed that continuity error and just been like, oh man, when cancer took Rocky and yeah. a stroke he took just my mom, visited a grave or something, or had yeah. her right or next he, to him, or he or could have said Rocky went and he's with his son, or they could have said. Anything, yeah. any explanation. Rocky's in Philly and he's too old to travel all the way out here. They could have just one quick right. line, but they didn't. And they tried to just bounce around it. And that was way more distracting. And I think mm-hmm. ruined Creed 3 worse than if they had just, just given something. Because something. the entire time he's like, I don't know how to talk about my feelings and everything. And in any of the other two movies, mm-hmm. Tessa Thompson and his mom and everyone and their dad would say, go talk to Rocky, because that was the relationship they had. Or even in Creed 3, like, he's showing, like, his little man cave, and he's got a picture of him and Duke standing there. I'm like, no, like, That's he would not have Rocky, been standing, right. wouldn't, he would not have pictures of him and Duke. He would have pictures of him and Rocky. Um, so. Hmm. Huh. That is wild. Yeah, and so Creed 3, I think, was trying almost. The, too hard. The way but. that Creed 3 fits into this is. It was really trying hard to grow past the legacy. Yeah. And it was under forced circumstances, of course. Mm-hmm. But I but like, I th- honestly, like having it, basically having them kill off Rocky would have been a great idea because mm-hmm. then you are going to have to move on past the legacy. The legacy mm-hmm. is, it's just a legacy at this point. Oh. It's gone. Well, the other thing, because again, I'm obsessed with music in this, mm-hmm. like we get flying high, we get the right. Rocky theme. Right. And at the end of the fight, and I was like, he, "Rocky's, Rocky's not in this. Where We're is gonna he? play yeah. his theme? <laughs> Are you kidding me?" Right. Oh man! So yeah, I Creed Creed Three was great, and I think mm-hmm. it does it does stand alone. It does grow beyond the legacy. But I think that when you do that, you still need to acknowledge the right. past in some in some way, or at least yeah. develop the story in a way that you can grow on without the past at all. Like. Even right. if even if Rocky did die at the end of Creed two or something, or there was some sort of sort of situation where Rocky couldn't be there, I think it would have been great. Yeah. Um, but I think they just they they skipped a very small but integral step in growing past the yeah. Rocky legacy. Dang. So anyway, th- those those are my thoughts on the Creed movies and how they represent different yeah. aspects of legacy sequels. No. Not going to lie, it kind of ruined it for me. I'm not excited for the other. I'm just kidding. No, I'm still very <laughs> excited for the other two. But again, Creed, Creed 2 is still a good movie. It's a still a yeah. fun watch. I was just, I think especially, again, because I watched them one after the other, yeah. watching Creed 2 after watching the first Creed is like... Pointless. <laughs> it's not pointless. I gave the first Creed a five out of five stars, and then I go, I go watch Creed 2, and I'm like, this is a solid three, I guess. Oh, um, okay. Like, okay. it's... Creed, it's it's still it's still a good movie, but yeah. it's just it's every other boxing movie I've ever seen. Whereas right. the first Creed is on a Knocked whole other level. Okay. Um. So yeah, any 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 thoughts, reactions to any of that? That was a lot of information. So many kind of not not actually, <laughs> but like I I completely understand how you like what you mean by that. Um, especially just I n- would, had not been caught up at all in the mm-hmm. event of like Rocky being there. I honestly I feel like I do actually remember like seeing. Yeah, he, is he like in the poster? He might be in the poster for like Creed Two or like Creed One. He's in the Rocky. poster for all of them. Okay, Rocky. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so I like I figured because I was like, yeah, he is in those. Like, I didn't even come to mind thinking about the other two. So, I mean, so, yeah. and in the other two, Rocky is basically Duke. Who Duke is in this movie? That's who Rocky was. Okay, but then also add like his mom's relationship. Mm-hmm. That was also Rocky. So take his mom and Duke, and then combine them, and then you kind of have Rocky in the other two movies. Tough. So that's that's why it was very distracting and yeah. a little odd to yeah. not have him included um, at all. Right? Yeah. I I mean hmm. I don't know. I I understand the situation. It is a load of crap. Uh, like I have a whole thing here. I put you just. So I, I read forget. through it. Yeah. Um. And he talked about how like he he made a stupid deal. Of, like every line of dialogue he's ever written is his own from his own brain. Right. But he doesn't own any of it. Man. Um. Which is which is tragic. But yeah, that's really unfortunate. That sucks. Mm. Hmm. That really sucks, man. So anyway, we've talked a lot about Creed, and this is a Creed 3 episode. Right. Um, But Creed is not the only legacy sequel out there. There are other legacy sequels that have been incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ask you, do you think that any of these other sequels can do what Creed 3 has done, and can they stand on their own away from the past and kind of grow past that legacy? Is Is it possible to do that, or is this something that's kind of more 
particular to Creed? See, I don't know. I feel like you got a couple mentions down here, like Star mm-hmm. Wars, Top Gun, Ghostbusters, Cobra Kai. Okay, as a couple. If I look at Star Wars, I feel like they've done relatively well. Yeah. When you look at things like Mando mm-hmm. or some others. I mean, like, unfortunately, they've still tied in heavily to, like, the Skywalker era. Sure. But if you look at, like, so mm-hmm. The Force Awakens, like, is mm-hmm. a more traditional legacy sequel, right? right? Um, and we saw what happened as they tried to move past what off. was. Mm-hmm. And then, but I think its ultimate failure was it was trying to also be what was in the past. And, right. Oh, no, yeah, somehow, the, somehow the emperor's back. Worst line in right. movie history. Yeah. But, like, I, I feel like that's another example of a movie that, like, it was really close. I think, honestly, and I said this before, Last Jedi, I think, was the opportunity for yeah. it to stand on its own. Yeah. Um, if J.J. Abrams had just scummed the flow. Mm-hmm. Maybe things could have gone differently, yeah. um, but I think I think the the sequel trilogy as a whole, I almost feel like it's a failure at trying mm-hmm. to like distinguish past it. Yeah, but I also agree with you with things like Mando, like mm-hmm. that is really standing on its own. I don't yeah. think anyone would have thought that like a monster of the week show in terms of Star Wars right. about a mask, a, a faceless character, really yeah. would have worked. But it's right. working fantastically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like with others. <sighs> I think it's tough. Like, I don't know. I feel like when it comes to like Top Gun, it is still heavily revolved around Maverick. Like now I mean, you it's get Top the Gun other, Maverick. I, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, yes. So, so here's a question. Do you think Top Gun could work without Tom Cruise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially with, with, with watching Maverick and just seeing the mm-hmm. new recruits and seeing them still go through what they could go through and like doing everything that they did. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. they could lead another class or have a few of those mains, like really pick up and continue. I would, I hope to see more honestly from the mm-hmm. top gun. Like I would love to see more. Um, I think with something like, like Cobra Kai, for example, I feel like that's going to be extremely hard. Um, mm-hmm. cause it literally is revolving around the dojo that started it. And mm-hmm. if you're having Danny and all of them, like still being there, you're not going to, well, and that was the thing with Cobra Kai is when they introduced it, mm-hmm. the whole, the whole, pitch was this is the new era mm-hmm. of 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 like karate, karate fighting right. kids mm-hmm. and then also we have donnie uh donnie johnny and danny johnny, yeah um i guess it is kind of donnie if you wanted to put the like you know like a couple name yeah you, you know? ship them together yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no anyway. Which i could have seen like honestly if they just left danny out of it and just let johnny do his thing take cobra kai sure give cobra kai its own thing mm-hmm. leave miyagi and like well and all that you can kind of, of see the like, almost a regression from standing on its own too, mm-hmm. as you watch the show. Cause this last season right. was, I mean, the screen time for the kids is, I don't remember any of the kids story arcs <laughs> in that season, to right. be honest, but it was all about the adults and yeah. the adults fighting and the adults doing their things. Yeah. Whereas if you go back to season one, it was all about the kids right. and the adults were also had like mm-hmm. their issues, but yeah. like, it was primarily focused on the kids. So you kind of mm-hmm. see like a regression yeah. of them going back to, we can't stand alone that everything is revolving around right. this feud and this that stupid tournament that happened in the eighties. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't know. I hope to see more come from things like, for example, one I'm kind of excited for um, Indiana Jones five mm-hmm. coming up. I hope that does well. I hope there's a setup or send off for, Harrison Ford's indie uh-huh. and we can see potentially someone else come in. I love those movies. Like I'm actually very excited for this one, but like I don't want it to end here and then I just never see it again or just get it completely rebooted. Like continue it. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a series that could do really well from like, give us one final, you know, Indiana Jones and then like mm-hmm. spin it off or just give us something. But how, how would you spin it off? Could not tell you that. I honestly have no thoughts. I think no the ideas. problem with that's Indiana why Jones is like, it is Harrison Ford. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, yeah. for start, like I don't know if you can do any in a Jones without Harrison. Ford. I also don't know if you can do Top Gun without Tom Cruise. Um, mm, I feel like if I feel like you could like in in this way, if you basically mm-hmm. like in this similar thing where you take Creed. I mean, seriously, like, you're gonna have the Top Gun, like cl- like um, not class, but the group. Like mm-hmm. you're gonna have that title. They're always gonna have more cadets coming in and taking on that challenge and doing missions like that, that you can still train around. It's so like, I feel like it all still revolves around there. And of course you can still have photos and flashbacks and have a voiceover or something like have something mm-hmm. or like some, like um, just give us like Tom Cruise for two seconds. I have a little, like something pop up, but 
I don't know. I feel like Top Gun, out of all of those examples, it would probably be the one to like be most successful. Sure. Carrying out. But I don't know. I could also sure. be wrong. That's fair. So here's an idea. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, like kind of what we're talking about and trying to get at is mm-hmm. what if you could what if you can grow past just the constant rebooting and revamping of all these other franchises and make something totally new and unique? At what point do you just because the idea of doing that right, right. is so you can sell an audience so much more right. easily in a, in a in a studio so much more easily? Yeah, you, absolutely. Like I, you people, know, the success, success like, behind the previous ones, you right? Know, like my expecting and my mom doesn't really watch movies hardly yeah. ever. My dad does like movies, but he's a very, I'm going to wait till it comes out on streaming to watch it kind of person. This guy. I dragged both the of them fall to, drive, to drive two hours <laughs> to go see Top Gun Maverick and right, IMAX because right. they were excited for another Top Gun because they, mm-hmm. they knew that they loved the first Top Gun. They wanted more of the story. And so like they- Top Gun touched every they, audience pool it could have. Yes. Yeah. And so obviously that's why they want to do legacy sequels. And so sometimes when you want an original story, you just- you find a way to tie it into these other things. That's yeah. kind of, I see that's what Creed was doing. I don't know if the Creed was intent, intending to do it that way, mm-hmm. but like that's kind of what, how Creed works. 3 has worked out, right? right? They're able to continue the story and they're just able to tell another cool boxing story. Mm-hmm. Um, what include, this is the son of Apollo Creed. And so right. at what point do you, do we settle for original stories that take place and preconceived universes or should we fight more and should we like try to convince more studios, hey, like this is a very original idea and it worked. Let's let more original ideas. Even though this last original idea, yes, it did sell well mm-hmm. and have a good opening weekend because of the legacy behind it. Yeah. But at what point do like is it even possible to go back to just original films? Or are the most original films we're going to get uh, as like a consistency? We have right. things like everything everywhere all at once, which is right. very much like an anomaly, I think, in this mm-hmm. kind of in the current Hollywood landscape, right. but like, absolutely, is it even possible to go back to that being the norm? Everything, ever, all at once, or are we going to be stuck in? I want an original story, like Ghostbusters Afterlife, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have to reference all of the Ghostbusters, and mm-hmm. they have to come back and, and for a final scene. I mean, I honestly like, I don't know, because I feel like people are still coming up with these original ideas. Mm-hmm. Like they're still out there and happening, but I feel like major studios are pushing them off and oh, they're absolutely. keeping their legacy sequels and they're going to Netflix originals and who prime originals and stuff like that. Like we're not going to see, which I hate because honestly, I feel like anything that goes to that section is not the best. Like it's so like mm-hmm. downgraded from what it could have been. And mm-hmm. so like, I kind of hate that, but I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel I just had a thought come to my mind. I literally just ran out. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Damn. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> It's, it's cool. It's, it's all, cool. It's all good. Graham, do you have any final thoughts on Creed 3 or legacy sequels or anything that we talked about today? Because we kind of covered a lot of ground. We covered a ton of ground. <laughs> um, yeah. When it comes to legacy sequels, we're all going to love them. Um, like I said, really, they're there for everyone. Um, mm-hmm. And we've seen it. Everything. I mean, anything people have been producing, like Top Gun Maverick, things like even Creed in some instances. And then, of course, like upcoming like Indiana Jones, like people are going to be excited about it. You're going to get mm-hmm. a new generation as well as the older generation. Um, it's going to touch to both audiences. So I love them. I feel like we all love them and they mm-hmm. tend to do really well. So I'm excited to keep seeing them, but I'm always going to be, you know, pushing for, I would love to see original content. Like mm-hmm. it's always going to not necessarily do better. But just a refresher. Like, I feel like anytime we see something original, I say that every time. Like, oh, I'm so glad it's not like the standard Marvel movie. I feel like it's not. Like, it's a breath of fresh air. It's something new. And so, like, I want that. I don't want that to ever die out. But, you know, who knows where we'll be 10 years mm-hmm. from now. But as far as Creed goes, incredible movie. Very, very excited to watch the first one. Especially with your rating. Giving that thing a 5 out of 5. Man. I loved the first I'm very movie. excited. Number two, who knows if that'll, who knows if we'll watch it. Just kidding. I probably will, but yeah, you, you, you got to watch it. Just, I think if you just give yourself yeah. a few days in between. Yeah. I not think, back to back. Yeah. Just, okay. Just don't. Yeah. Right. My recommendation. Don't watch all three <laughs> Creed movies back to back. Do the order I'm doing. So do go, go see three in theaters. If you haven't don't, seen any don't of them, do then that. see one, wait a few days and then see number two. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> That's, that's, no, that's a bad decision. Great movie overall. Definitely go see it if you get a chance. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I did enjoy Creed 3. I, I do enjoy this franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just has a few issues that I'm way too nitpicky about, and I don't <laughs> think anyone actually cares about, but this is my podcast, and I'm going to talk about it. Exactly. Uh, you've been listening to The Popcorn Hangover. My name is Alex. That is Graham. We've been discussing Creed 3 and how legacy sequels can stand on their own. What are your thoughts on Creed 3? Let us know in the comments down below and on all the other things, TikTok, Instagram, patreon.com, slash popcornhangover. Next week's tease. Um, look, if you've listened to the podcast for any period of time, you know I've been very excited about one project in particular. So excited, in fact, that I have been preparing for next week's episode for months. Like, before the thing even, like, came out, <laughs> even had a release date, I've been getting ready for it. I'm going to uh, be so underprepared. No, That's fine. I'm, I'm so pumped. The music ran out. I don't care because I'm, I'm so excited for next week's episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. All right. Peace.